Okay, continuing on our goal of classifying the natural numbers that have primitive roots and those that don't, we need the following lemma. So there is a primitive root a modulo p such that a to the p minus 1 is not congruent to 1 mod p squared. So notice that from a previous result, we have that there is a primitive root modulo any prime, and so we're kind of using that implicitly in here. Um, and then we're showing that this primitive root <coughs> Um, modulo p, if you take it to its p minus 1 power, which is notice that's phi of p, you don't get 1 modulo p squared. Great, so here's what, how we want to do that. Let's let a be a primitive root modulo p. Good, and then really we have two cases here. So case number one is that we take a to the p minus one and we end up with something that is not congruent to one mod p squared. And in this case, we are done. So if we were lucky enough to choose initially one that satisfied the conclusion of this lemma, then we're already done. So we might as well move on to case two which is the interesting one, and that is a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p squared. And in that case, we want to consider the following. So we want to consider a prime, which equals a plus p. Good. And now, first of all, notice that this is congruent to a modulo p, which tells us that a prime is also a primitive root modulo p. So we have a and a prime are primitive roots modulo p. Um, and now what we want to show is that this new number a prime satisfies the conclusion of this lemma. So in other words, we want to take a prime to the p minus 1 power. So maybe we'll say, let's notice the following calculation, that if we take a prime to the p minus 1 power, that's the same thing as taking a plus p to the p minus 1 power. And now we can use uh, binomial expansion theorem to tell us that this is equal to a to the p minus 1 pl plus p minus 1 times a times p. Um, sorry, times a to the p minus 2 times p. Great, and then plus p squared times the rest of it. So notice we're writing this in increasing powers of p, which is the second variable of this binomial. So here we have p to the 0, here we have p to the 1, and everything else is going to be... Um, in terms of p squared or higher, but since we're going to be working modulo p squared, you know, that's okay and we don't need to worry about that. So now the next thing we want to notice is that this is congruent to a to the p minus 1 plus p minus 1 a to the p minus 2 times p modulo p squared. Good, um, and now uh, what we'll notice is the following. So um, this thing we started with was congruent to 1 mod p squared. So we can write this as this is 1 plus p minus 1 times a to the p minus 2 times p modulo p squared. Okay, good. And now uh, the next thing to notice is that this is not congruent to 1 modulo p squared. So if, if this whole thing is congruent to 1 mod p squared, then, um, well, we know that p minus 1 and p are relatively prime, which means p minus 1 and p squared are relatively prime, which would tell us that p squared has to divide a to the p minus 2 times p. Great, but it follows from that that p has to divide a. 
So if p squared divides this, well, we can factor one factor of p out by uh, erasing the p on the right-hand side, which means p squared divides a power of a, but that means p divides a. But what that tells us is that a uh, was never a primitive root mod p, which is a contradiction. Um, so, so, and I should have said that if this is congruent to 1 mod p, we get that contradiction. So, in fact, it's not congruent to 1 mod p. And so we can add that in here. This is not congruent to 1. Okay, great. And that finishes this proof.